Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming ministry of the Reformed Catholic Church and the Franciscans of Divine Mercy and Love of God, or shortly, the Order of Franciscans of Mercy, of which I am the Servant General. Today, we are celebrating and will be reflecting on the readings for one of my favorite, favorite Sundays of the year, and one of my favorite gospel images of Christ. Good Shepherd Sunday. And by the way, before I even begin reflecting on the readings, I want to wish every single mother out there, I want to ask God to give them all the graces they need to completely be able to guide, comfort, love, inspire, cherish their children with a deep sense and knowledge of, and love of Almighty God and enjoyment. Teach them to enjoy the diversity that God has created in this world a blessed and glorious Mother's Day to each and every mother, grandmother, mother-to-be that is in my viewing region and around the world. Now, I'll begin reflecting on the message found in all the readings for the fourth Sunday of Easter. And the message is singular, of God's unending love for his children. In the gospel, Christ compares the entire human race to sheep who know their master's voice and follow it. The master is Christ, the good shepherd. We are his sheep. His voice is his teachings, and we follow it. Seems simple, doesn't it? Seems simple to me. Christ is the good shepherd. We are his sheep. We know his voice, his teachings, so we follow them. The entrance antiphon proclaims, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The word of the Lord created the heavens. Alleluia. Another translation is, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, heaven were created. Alleluia. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 14 and 43 to 52. And it tells the story of Paul and Barnabas preaching in Antioch in Prasida, the Word of God, that Christ came for all human beings, not just the Jewish people. They preached it with these words. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. My salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Christ came for everybody. His message was not just for the Jewish people. 
it was for the Jews, the Greeks, the Asians. It was for everybody. Everybody. And remember, at the time of Christ, there were people in other areas that many people did not know existed even. And certainly Christ knew, but nobody else knew that the Americas existed. And we know that there were human beings living in the Americas at the time of Christ. So, Christ came for everybody. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were created. I have made you a light for the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So the good news of salvation, Scripture, needs to be proclaimed. And the message is that salvation obtained through the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was for the entire human race. But for every person who welcomes the message and the truths and tries to follow what Jesus taught. And if they follow it, they're saved. If they follow it, they will have eternal life with all the heavenly elect. Over and over we've been taught. In fact, we had Divine Mercy Sunday, which was all about the infinite mercy and love of God. We have been taught and throughout all of Scripture, it's about the infinite mercy and love of God for all His children. We're reminded again and again that all good comes from God. Everything that God created is good. There's a purpose for it all. We haven't always found all the purposes, but God knows what they are and we need to find them. Look and you shall find. Seek and you shall find. Ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be opened to you. We have been given the task to seek out the truth. We've been given the task to know God, love God, and serve God. And the Gospel reading is that wonderful Gospel from John. It's the Gospel of the Good Shepherd. Jesus said, the sheep that belong to me, listen to my voice. Okay. We're, I've already stated earlier, Christ is the shepherd, we are the sheep. Jesus said, the sheep that belong to me, listen to my voice. That means we follow what Jesus said. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never be lost, and no one will ever steal them from me. Because Satan's always trying to steal us from God. So, if we keep doing what God says, and we strive to do the best, and we ask forgiveness for our failures, 
God's not going to let the power of darkness win over. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone. God. The Father who gave them to me, God, is greater than anyone, and no one can steal from the Father. The Father and I are one. I like, uh, that phrase to me is extremely important. The Father and I are one. When we speak of Christ, we are speaking of God. When we speak of God, we're speaking of Christ. Christ is the human manifestation of God. He was sent by God in human form to let us clearly know, to give us a new covenant that we would clearly understand and know exactly what God expected of us. Christ has told us that through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we will learn the truth concerning sin and righteousness. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we will learn the truth. Often people ask, what is sinful and what constitutes a mortal sin as opposed to a venial or small sin? Hmm. What is sin? not trusting and believing in God, not doing God's will. We have been told that only the ruler of this world, Almighty God, makes all the judgments, not mere mortal men. There is not a mortal on the face of the earth who can say, you're condemned. Any human who claims to make judgments against someone else, saying they are condemned to hell, is speaking totally and completely out of turn and is actually committing a grievous sin themselves. Hopefully they realize it and ask forgiveness. And we know our God is a loving God, our God is a forgiving God, so therefore they will be forgiven. God is a just, loving, merciful, and compassionate God who knows that we're humans and we're not perfect and that we're prone to sin. But in His infinite mercy and love, He forgives us if we but ask for forgiveness. God is more than willing to forgive anyone for their transgressions, no matter how serious they might be, if they but ask Him. <clears throat> God's goodness, love, mercy, and compassion is unlimited, unconditional, and infinite for all who come to Him. The Gospel reminds us on Good Shepherd Sunday that God is like a good shepherd who seeks out every one of his sheep, even those that have become lost. In a homily for Good Shepherd Sunday, Pope Francis told the faithful gathered at Casa Santa Maria the following. It is not always easy to distinguish the voice of the Good Shepherd. There is always the danger of the thief, the robber, and the false shepherd. The Good Shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Drawing, uh, the Pope, drawing on today's readings, 
spoke about the three characteristics of a good shepherd and what a good shepherd possess, should possess. The shepherd's first characteristic, he said, is to be passionate, zealous. He cannot be a true shepherd without this fire. So a true shepherd has to be compassionate and zealous. Okay? Francis went on. The second feature a good shepherd needs is, is someone who knows how to discern, to discern where the dangers are, where the graces are, and where the real road is, the road to heaven. In practice, this means the shepherd always in the good and bad moments, accompanies patiently, brings them to the fold. The true shepherd knows how to discern and be on guard against the seduction of evil. Okay, that's the second feature. The Pope went on. The third feature is the ability to denounce meaning knowing how to report evil and not to be naive. An apostle cannot be naive by saying, ah, it's all right, let's go ahead. It's all right, let's party, everyone. Everything is possible because there is the fidelity to the only groom, Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, who knows how to condemn evil and to say no, like a caring mother says when the baby starts to clap and goes to the electric socket to put his fingers in it. No, no, it's dangerous. A good shepherd does not want any of his sheep to be injured or hurt in the brambles. Christ has instructed us how we should lead our lives. Those are the qualities of a good shepherd, according to the Pope. Today's gospel reinforces what I have preached for the last 17 years, that God does not forget anyone that has drifted away and seeks, God seeks them out. God will not, if he can help it, let you be lost. The good shepherd, God, seeks out the lost lamb and if necessary, if necessary, will carry the lamb back on his shoulder. That is what we, who are called God's shepherds here on earth, we, priests, bishops, the Pope, that's what we're called to do to seek out those who have felt unwanted or have lost their way and let them know that God loves them. God wants them, welcomes them back. God forgives them. God is not, does not want them to be lost. God does not want to condemn them. God wants to embrace them and love them. And God will help them by carrying them, if necessary, to overcome. It's sort of like the story of the prodigal son that we had a few weeks back. That he welcomed his son back in spite of the fact that the son squandered all of the goodness and the wonderful things that he inherited. He squandered them, wasted them. But the father still welcomed him back and said, quick, quick, get him the best robe and get him sandals on his feet and put rings on his fingers. God, the good shepherd, doesn't want anyone to be lost. The mercy, love, and compassion of Almighty God is unending and it extends to all 
who believe in Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the Enlightener. God the Father, the Creator. Jesus Christ, the Son, Redeemer and Savior. The Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, the Enlightener. To believe is to trust totally in God and accept what He has created and make the most of our lives as He created us. We need to honor God with prayer, works of charity, compassion, and forgiveness of the wrongs others commit against us. We need to let go of it, forgive them. If we don't, we're not fulfilling God's will. Forgive those who have wronged you, pray for them. God's children, which means every human being on the face of the earth, needs to be loved, cared for, regardless of their race, their nationality, their sexual orientation, just as Christ did to every single human being he encountered as he walked this earth. We especially have to extend love and forgiveness to all those who have hurt us by their actions, their words. We need to pray for them. Christ forgave those who crucified him as he hung on the cross. He said, one of the seven last words of Christ were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Christ gave us the example. You know, read the New Testament. Read the life of Christ, read his teachings, absorb them, let them become a nourishment for you. By attempting to live as Christ instructed, we become the fulfillment of Christ here on earth and a disciple in this day and age. If we love one another as Christ loved us, we will be numbered among the heavenly elect and be one of those that John described in the second reading from Revelations. Okay, let me read it to you. Revelation 7, verses 9 through 17. Read them. These are the people who have been through the great persecution, and because they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb, they now stand in front of God's throne and serve Him day and night in His sanctuary. And the one who sits on the throne will spread His tent over them. They will never hunger or thirst again. Neither the sun nor scorching wind will ever plague them, because the Lamb who is at the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away all the tears from their eyes. That's the reading from Revelations. If we but live as Christ instructed us, if we speak out against injustice, if we speak out against those who would do harm to others, if we strive to end 
hunger, poverty, homelessness, if we're kind and generous, if we give our 10% back to God, if we pray and talk to God and have God in the center and the heart of our lives, then we will be among the elect. I end with this prayer. May God give us the courage and the strength to live our life in a manner that is consistent with and that pleases God and reflects the infinite mercy and love of God to all, every single human being we encounter on our daily journey through life. Until we meet again, I invite you to please, please visit our website, www.missionstsergius.org. There you will find our TV show. I publish it the beginning of the week, and it remains there for a whole week, so people can always go there if they miss the show on their local, local cable access station, or if they don't have access to YouTube, or they don't, you know, it's always on the website, as is my homily from Sunday, and there'll be an update on our annual fund drive and where we stand with that at the present time we're running.